Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be reviewing the books that are on the shortlist for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. So if you don't know, the Walter Scott Prize is a prize for historical fiction um, and I really, really enjoy this prize because I love historical fiction. And um, so I've been reading along with the Walter Scott Prize this year, which I've done in a few previous years. So I haven't managed to read the whole long list. Um, I think there were 12 or 13 books on the long list and I've read eight of them, um, but I have read all of the four books on the short list. Um, so I did previously make a video talking about the other books from the long list that I've read, which I'll link down below. Um, but today I'm going to be reviewing the four books on the short list for the Walter Scott Prize. In general, well, I think it's a really good shortlist. Um, I really enjoyed all of these books. I would say two are sort of four star reads for me and two are five star reads for me. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute. I feel like if I had been making my own shortlist out of the stuff that I have read from the long list, um, I would have also included Mrs. England by Stacey Halls on it. I did used to work at Stacey Halls' publisher and I did do some work on Mrs. England. So I am slightly like biased in my affection towards it. But I do think it is a truly fantastic book. So if I were making my own shortlist, I would have included Mrs. England alongside these four books. Um, but I do think the four books on the shortlist are really really good. So anyway let's get into talking about those four books and then I will start off with the two that I found were four star reads for me and then I'll go on to my um, five star reads and my absolute favourite um, later on in the video. So I'm going to start off I think by talking about Fortune by Amanda Smith. This one is set in 1920s Trinidad and it follows various characters who are kind of caught up in the oil rush going on at that time and the book kind of focuses on three characters I would say. A man called Eddie who has come back to Trinidad um, in order to try and make his fortune from oil um, and then um, his business partner who he kind of teams up with at the beginning a man called Tito and Tito's wife Ada. Ada um, is recovering from a long illness she's feeling quite dissatisfied with her life Tito's a bit older than her and their relationship seems to be going through a rocky patch and when Ada meets Eddie and kind of gets caught up in the excitement about the oil rush that kind of affects her relationship with Tito all the more. I really liked Fortune I think it was really well written and the characterization was well done and there was some absolutely beautiful writing um, and some really really kind of stunning moments in it. I feel like it explored a really interesting and different thing. I don't think I've read anything about like an oil rush before. Um, I have read some books about gold rushes and it did kind of remind me in places of the luminaries um, and the way Ellen McCatton kind of writes about the gold rush in New Zealand in the luminaries. And I feel like the way Amanda Smith writes about um, the buzz around the money to be made and the ambition and the greed and the um, kind of all-consuming nature of that ambition and how that can lead to taking risks um, and kind of doing slightly mad things um, in order to try and make this this great fortune and um, I feel like that was explored really really well. I also feel like throughout the book there is a undercurrent of kind of colonialism and the way um, that certain communities within Trinidad are taking advantage of other communities within Trinidad and I felt like that was explored well as well and that was something that was like running throughout the whole book where like even where some of the main characters um, weren't aware of it, the reader was always really aware of it. So I thought that was done really well as well. So in general, I really enjoyed Fortune. I thought it was really strong. It did take me a little bit longer to get into um, than some of the other books on the Walter Scott Price shortlist. And I also feel like I wanted slightly more at the end. I don't know if I wanted slightly more at the end. Basically, I read something online before reading the book, which told me what um, real historical event Fortune is based on. And that real historical event doesn't happen until very near the end of the book so I kind of felt like I was waiting for something to happen. Like I feel like the ending would have been stronger if I hadn't been like knowing what was coming I suppose. I don't know. I still thought it was a really strong book and I definitely recommend it. There was something about it as well that felt quite cinematic or like like a stage play. I'm trying to think exactly what I mean. I think it's partly because quite a lot of the characters have that sort of like Greek tragedy sense of hubris um, possibly heading for a fall about them um, and that kind of made it feel like it would be well performed. Um, I don't know. But anyway, really good read, would definitely recommend. Next, I want to talk about Rose Nicholson by Andrew Grieg. Um, this book I have already spoken about in my May wrap up. So Rose Nicholson begins in 1570s Scotland. We're following a young man called William Fowler, who at the beginning of the book um, is on his way to university, um, to the University of St Andrews, um, leaving home for the first time in order to try and build a life for himself. And the book basically follows Fowler at university, his friendship with a young man called Tom Nicholson, who he meets at university, and also his relationship with um, Tom Nicholson's sister Rose but as well as following kind of Fowler's coming of age story and his friendship his relationship 
relationship with these two people. We're also seeing what happens when him and Tom Nicholson get kind of involved in the political and religious um, divisions and debates that are going on at the time, as well as meeting and befriending and becoming involved with um, the Scottish hero Sir Walter Scott, who is not the same Sir Walter Scott who was a historical novelist who the prize is named after, but a different Sir Walter Scott previous to him in the history of Scotland, which is kind of fun. But anyway, there was a lot that I really enjoyed about Rose Nicholson. Um, I think as I said in my wrap up, I love the characterization. I feel like the characterization and the writing was great. I really enjoyed Will Fowler's story, his characterization um, and his relationship, especially with Tom Nicholson and Rose Nicholson. Um, I feel like those character relationships were done really well. And I feel like the way the book looks at how both Tom and Rose kind of don't fit into this society at the particular point in time they're in was done really well. I feel like the subtle way Tom's sexuality was explored was really well done and I feel like the way that Rose's um, atheist beliefs in this very religious time were explored and her kind of views on her own kind of um, social position as a woman and as a working class woman and how she um, resists against what society says that means she should do. Um, I felt all of that was really really interesting and I feel like she was a fantastic character so there was a lot in that that I really really loved and I feel like the love story and the kind of relationships between the characters in this book were were so well done. I will say that I did slightly struggle with some of the political stuff um, and I slightly struggled to follow some of the political drama um, and the historical stuff going on at times, which I think is just because I don't know very much about this time in history. Um, the 16th century is not my time period at all. But in general, I feel like Rose Nicholson was a really strong book, one I really enjoyed. And I feel like the narrative voice and the way it kind of used a slightly more modern in places narrative voice but not always um, and a kind of like self-reflective narrative voice was a really nice way of doing historical fiction for this particular time as well. So overall I really enjoyed Rose Nicholson and definitely one I'd recommend especially if you know a bit more about the 16th century than me. But now moving on to my two five star reads from the Walter Scott Prize shortlist. Next I want to talk about The Magician by Colm Tobin. I really really enjoyed this book um, and I'm so glad that I read it because I've been meaning to read something by this author for ages. Um, I know a lot of people love Brooklyn especially um, and he's sort of vaguely been on my radar for a long time but I've never read anything by him but I loved his writing a lot so I definitely want to read more by him in the future and I really really enjoyed The Magician. So The Magician is about the life of the German author Thomas Mann um, and it starts in Germany in the 1890s I think and then it goes right through to the 1950s um, so it's looking at all of Thomas Mann's life really and it's looking at a huge chunk of world history and German history. Looking at his childhood, his career as a writer and um, the influence of the First World War on him, the kind of complications of Germany between the wars and the rise of Hitler, Thomas Mann like in exile abroad during the Second World War and kind of everything that follows. Um, and it it kind of is such an ambitious novel in so many ways, but it's so fantastic. There was so much that I loved about The Magician. Um, so let's just start off with like the way that Colm Tobin writes. I found his writing like really subtle. Like I feel like there's not tons and tons of description. There's not tons of explanation. He more just says things and his writing like isn't very emotional, but somehow it has a subtle power to extract lots of emotion from you as a reader. Describing you know, terrible, dramatic, complicated things in that subtle, gentle way was so powerful um, and kind of awful that it was fantastic. Um, so that's one thing that I really loved about it. I also really liked the fact that it was about Thomas Mann and his life. Um, Thomas Mann's an author I've read a little bit from. Um, basically, I've read Death and Venice and nothing else. Um, but I feel like the way this book talked about his writing, his writing career, his love of writing, why he wanted to write, what he wanted to write about, um, the way he used his writing to explore his own sexuality. And in fact, the way the book The Magician looked at Thomas Mann's sexuality, I thought was really well done. Um, and all the complexities around sexuality, um, especially over a long period of time in which views about sexuality were changing. Um, I feel like all of that stuff was done so well. I also feel like the way the book looked at Thomas Mann's position, not just as a writer, but also as a German writer at a particular point in German history and the kind of pressure he felt to 
um, kind of be involved with or not be involved with politics and make his views heard or not heard. I feel like that was really well done. The book looks a lot at Thomas Mann's family, his wife and children, um, and he had a very big family. Um, and looking at all of them, who were such interesting characters, I assume most of it is based on fact. I don't know to what extent the book is fictional or not. Um, but I feel like the way the book looked at his fascinating family was just really, really interesting. I also just loved the history within The Magician. Like I said, it spans a long period of time looking at a big section of history um, and a lot of it is set in Germany but also parts of it take place in other places in Europe and parts of it take place in the USA. I feel like the way this book looks at kind of the history of the 20th century especially was really really good and really interesting. I feel like the way the book engaged with history and people's position and place within history was really really fantastic. I've been thinking about like the Walter Scott Prize um, as a prize. I wonder how they judge their books. Do they that say which of these is the best quality book which happens to be set in the past or do they say which of these is the best work of historical fiction like which of these books is the one that is like engaging most interestingly with history and um, i feel like the magician engages really interestingly with history which was something that i loved about it so definitely a fantastic book um a really really strong read i loved it and i'm really excited to read more by this author in the future so yes would definitely definitely recommend the magician which i loved a lot but not quite as much as I love the next book I'm going to talk about. So let's move on to the final book on the shortlist, which was my favourite book from the shortlist, one of my favourite books of the year so far, definitely my favourite to win, um, and that is News of the Dead by James Robertson. I love this book so much, and I thought it was really, really fantastic and really different and strange and wonderful. I feel like every year that I read along with the Walter Scott Prize, um, I read a lot of very good books that I like, and I read some books that aren't quite for me or a bit too literary for me. Um, but then I also, like every year, I feel like I'd read one book where I'm like, oh, a new favourite that I never would have read if it wasn't for the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction. Um, so, you know, Now We Should Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller. I read quite a few years ago when I was reading along with the prize. Um, last year, I read um, The Tolstoy State by Stephen Conte and The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams, both of which I loved, um, and this year, News of the Dead by James Robertson is definitely my discovery of the year um, from the Walter Scott Prize, and I loved it hugely. So News of the Dead is a work of historical fiction, but it takes place in lots of different times. It talks about the Iron Age, it talks about the early 19th century, it talks about um, the 1940s and kind of just after the Second World War, and it talks about the present day, and also talks about kind of coronavirus. Um, and in a way, it's not just a work of historical fiction, but it's a book about history and storytelling um, and kind of how stories are told and how history is recorded and, and how history changes over time. I don't know. Anyway, so there are a few different things within News of the Dead. Um, so there is a first person narrative um, kind of in the present day from a woman called Maya um, who is living in this fictional Scottish Glen called Glen Connock. Maya is very elderly. She's in her 80s. She is the oldest resident of Glen Connock, um, where hardly anyone lives. And Maya is kind of talking about Glen Connock in the present day, the history of Glen Connock, all of the stories and myths surrounding this place. And then another part of the novel is the journal of a man called Charles Gibb from 1809. Um, and then Charles Gibb is a bit of a rogue and a chancer. He has managed to like cheat and scheme and pretend his way into high society and he has pretended his way into an invitation um, from the Baron of Glen Connock um, under the pretense that he is going to make a translation of this very old text that Glen Connock has and while there Charles kind of gets to know all of the other people and Charles is a fantastic character because you're reading his diary and you're seeing both how he presents himself to everyone else but also how he presents himself when he's writing his own diary and he is a really unreliable narrator he is um just like infuriating in so many ways very dislikable his you know his judgments on other characters are not to be trusted but you also kind of get to see everyone through his eyes working out the ways in which he is biased and um, which is just a great way on commenting on like the unreliability of historical sources which is great too anyway and then the other element within news of the dead is the book of connock which charles gibb is translating um and i assume that the version of, that we're given within the book news of the dead is supposed to be the translation that Charles Gibb has written so how reliable it is we don't know because we don't know whether it's his unreliable translation or the original book and the book of Connock is um, this kind of account of this Iron Age saint Connock and it's written in this kind of like biblical tone um, kind of talking about Connock's life 
And in a way, the book is looking at like lots of different periods of turmoil um, and how all of these different characters are interpreting their bits of turmoil. But also it's about how all of the characters are kind of looking back on the other time periods and interpreting and reinterpreting those other time periods. And I just, I just loved it. Like there was so much about it that I loved. The characterization is fantastic. The writing is wonderful. The different voices of the different narratives within the book kind of really come to life. The kind of structure of the book I thought was really well plotted and paced because it does contain so many different things um, and different things kind of like end at different times but somehow it works really really well and it worked fantastically for me um, and I also feel like the themes within the book are so well done the themes of religion the themes of death um, and kind of grief and um, the themes of tempestuous times in history um, and how they affect people the themes of kind of pretense and who you are and who you say you are and the themes of like history and storytelling and how we interpret the past and how we tell stories and how that affects our view of the past and how history is created as this kind of separate thing that is not just the past but is a way of talking about the past and I just thought that was great and I feel like one of the reasons why I would really love it if it won the World Scott Prize was not just because I think it's a fantastic book and I think it's my favourite of these four books but also because I feel like it's the book on the shortlist which like really engages with history and what history is and like what it means to talk about the past in just a really fantastic way which I loved. I also found an incredibly emotional read like I was really crying near the end um, and I feel like the the way it's set up and all the characterization and the way I came to feel about all the characters was fantastic. Like even Charles Gibb who is like such a terrible person in so many ways like I did come to like feel for him and understand him much more and the characters you see in his narrative especially Jessie Mill I really liked her I thought she was done so well and Maya and Lanny were fantastic it was such a good book just so like well written and masterfully crafted um, and so like simultaneously both like really fun in the way that it played with history but also like really powerful in the themes that it explores and I just thought it was very very excellent and yeah would highly highly recommend News of the Dead what a book. Just loved it hugely. I also listened to it on audiobook and I would really, really recommend the audiobook. As I said, it's told it through lots of different voices and lots of different stories and the audiobook is really well done with different narrators and that works really well to kind of create that sense of like different narratives weaving together. So yes, I would highly, highly recommend News of the Dead. It was very, very excellent. So all in all, a very excellent shortlist for the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction. I think the winner is due to be announced tonight as of when I'm filming this. Um, so I think it will be announced by the time this video goes up. Um, so if it is, I will probably insert a bit here talking about my thoughts about the winner, but I just, I just really hope it is news of the dead because I just thought it was so good. Hello again, this is Katie from Later in the Day um, and I just thought I would add a little bit to this video because I've just seen on Twitter that the winner of the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction has been announced and it was News of the Dead by James Robertson. I'm so thrilled because that was my favourite to win and I loved it so much and I'm just hugely delighted. So this is the third time I've read along with the Walter Scott Prize and this is the first time that like my favourite one has won um, so that's really nice and I'm so glad because I feel like it was only not just a fantastic book but also a book that like engaged with history as a concept in a really fun way um, so I feel like it really deserved to win a prize for historical fiction so very very delighted about that I'm so pleased it's such a great book and yeah very very nice so that's all for now I'll round up the video here um, but please do let me know down in the comments um, if you've read any of these books what you thought of them and that's it thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video